Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. So in the past few videos I had a lot of comments and a lot of questions asking for some suspension tips for you guys. So today I'm going to give you a few tips that you can do before your next ride. Let's get into it. But before we get into a video, I'm not a suspension engineer in any way, these are just five basic tips that you can do as a rider before you go riding to get your suspension feeling better. But guys, remember that you can't just set your suspension and leave it. There's so many different factors that affect how your suspension will feel, like the weather, the track conditions, your riding style, so many different factors that will change how your suspension feels and you need to adjust every single time you ride to counteract that. But I just see a lot of people scared to adjust their suspension and it's really simple. All you need to do is write down your base settings and start from there. So if you change your suspension, it might be better, it might actually be worse. But if you've wrote down your base settings, you can always come back and start again. So tip number one is ride this out. Now what I mean by that is with the rear shock, is if your spring rate is the correct for your weight. Now if that's wrong, then all the other tips I'm going to show you today will be completely off. So how do we measure that? Well, first you want to put your bike on a stand and take a measurement from your rear axle up onto your silencer or your rear mud guard and that will give you a first measurement. So what you want to do then is get the bike off the stand. You want to sit on your bike and get someone to hold the bike upright for you so all your body weight is on the bike. Now this is best to do with all your kit on so the weight is more accurate but you can do it without. And then get someone to measure the exact same point from the swinging arm or the axle back up to the mudguard or the silencer and make sure they're both from the same place so you know that measurement is perfect. Now whether you're running a linkage rear shock or a PDS rear shock, that spring rate measurement will actually vary. So if you just have a look at your manufacturer specifications of your bike and you'll see if you're in the right ballpark or not. Right, now tip number two is static sag. Now this is very similar to rider sag and the only difference is that you won't be sat on the bike when you're taking the measurement. So we go back to the bike. What you want to do is measure again from the rear axle or the swing arm up to the mudguard or the silencer. Get that first measurement, get the bike off the stand and just push down a few times on the shock just to make sure it's nicely settled how it would be when you ride the bike. And then take exactly the same measurement from the same point from the axle or the swing arm up to the mudguard or the silencer and that will give you a measurement. Now, like I said before, if you have linkage or if you have PDS, that measurement will vary, so check your manufacturer specifications. On the beach this year, we're using a linkage, so we generally use between 35 mil and 40 mil of static sag. And it all comes down to rider preference or the terrain you're actually riding on. So say if you're going riding sand, you want the rear to be nice and low to make the front end light. So you'd obviously have more sag, meaning 40 mil, or 41, even 42. Um, but if you're riding enduro, or if you're riding really hard packed terrain where you want the bike to be really heavy on the front to get more grip, then you'll obviously want less sag. So you'll want to use 35, 36 even. But as a ballpark figure, we normally use about 36 or 37 mil of static sag. Now, tip number three, we'll move to the front of the bike and it's actually fork height. Now this will determine how balanced your bike feels. But like I said before, this is all rider preference. Now there are some recommendations, but some riders like to have the front a bit higher, some a bit lower. It all depends on how you like to ride a motorbike. So in terms of me and my bike, I like the bike to be really, really neutral. Front and rear of the bike to be really neutral and planted because in enduro, we have to race over sand, rocks, roots, mud, dust all different types of terrain and so we need the bike to work well in every single condition not great in one condition and bad in another so i like to use my fork right at the top of the top tube i'm quite a tall rider so that's what works best for me but if i was riding a sand track or if i went the front a little bit higher i'd push them all the way down so it's completely flush with the top of the clamp or on the other hand if i'm riding a really dusty or slippery event i'll actually push the forks a bit further up just to put more weight on the front wheel and try and get a bit more grip Right, tip number four is what everyone thinks is the most important thing about suspension, whether that be true or not, and it's compression. Now this can be done in a fork or a shock. Really simply, all you need is a flathead screwdriver and a bit of knowledge. So if you want to make the suspension harder, it's really, really simple to do. All you need to do is get a screwdriver and actually close the screw, turn it clockwise, and that will close the compression of your shock or your fork. And that's why on the fork, 
I actually put an o-ring on the stanchion and that is simply so when I'm riding a track or if I'm out testing we can actually see how well that fork is working how hard it is and how much of that travel I'm actually using but you should never rely on that you should always go off how you feel and how the bike feels and then tip number five is the same sort of principle it's rebound and that is how quickly your shock or your forks rebound when riding. So it's really, really simple to change once again. Like I said, if you go down to the shock, there's a little screw at the bottom. If you close that screw, turn it clockwise, that's actually closing the, the rebound, making it slower. And it's the same with the four. At the bottom, there's a little screw. If you get the screwdriver, turn it clockwise, that'll close it, make it slower or open it to make it faster. But remember on the fork, it's both sides. But guys, like I said at the start of the video, don't be afraid to try stuff, you know? If you go to the track, if you go to sand track where there's big bumps and you're bottoming out all the time, don't be afraid to just close that compression or close the rebound a little bit, just try some stuff. You can always go back to the base settings that you wrote down. It doesn't really matter. But the most important thing is to just experiment, just try different things. You won't know what you like until you try different stuff. It'll never always work. You know, I've done it myself. I've been out testing, I've tried stuff and I've actually gone the wrong way, but it doesn't matter. That's all experience. You can always come back and try another way. The only way you can progress is going out, making mistakes and learning from it. Just go and try some stuff and it'll make you a better rider. And guys, this isn't rocket science. It's just the basic stuff that as a rider, you should know. So if you're out at a race or at a meeting and you're struggling a little with the bike, just with a simple measurement or a screwdriver, you can change completely how the bike feels. And that's massively, massively important in progressing as a rider and getting faster. So guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Just go out and try a couple of new things. Let me know if they helped or if you need any more help. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.